Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Farmer George. On today's episode I'm going to introduce to you a new pepper cross that I created and then I'm going to give you some facts about hybrid peppers and what you need to know about when you're crossing peppers. Everybody's crossing peppers these days and everybody has their own reasons but what I wanted to do was I love the flavor of jalapenos, I love the texture of jalapenos but my heat tolerance is getting a lot stronger. I can deal with a lot more heat and uh, jalapenos aren't cutting it anymore. I want to be able to make some really spicy jalapeno poppers. You know, get that same crunch and flavor from a jalapeno but the heat from say a ghost pepper. So what I did was last summer I created a cross between a ghost pepper and a jalapeno and I ended up with this little guy. <laughs> There he is. And because I crossed a jalapeno and a ghost pepper, my wife thought of a, an amazing name for it, and we're calling it the jalapeno. So, I haven't tasted this yet, and this is the first ripe pod. I want to get the seeds of this one into the ground as fast as possible so I can get the F2 seeds started. <clears throat> and then I'll be able to hopefully get uh, larger pods outside resulting from different genetic makeup that's contained within these seeds. So now that you've seen it up close, let's go get a knife and uh, we'll cut it open and we'll do a taste test. And as I'm eating this and uh, waiting for the heat to die down, I'm assuming this is gonna have the heat of a ghost pepper, so it's gonna be pretty hot. Um, I'm gonna hit you with some pepper, some hybrid pepper facts so that you know what to expect when you're crossing your own peppers. Like I said before, this pepper is smaller than I wanted. It's attributed to probably two factors. Growing inside a small, cracky uh, hydroponic system, whereas it would probably be a tiny bit bigger if it were outside. Secondly, it has traits of both parents, both parent plants, the ghost pepper and the jalapeno. And the ghost pepper is a little bit stockier and shorter than the jalapeno. The jalapeno is a little bit longer, so it's kind of meeting in the middle in terms of size. So those are the two reasons why it's uh, such a small size. I do have one that's probably twice as long as this, um, but I want to get the seeds out of this one first. So without further ado, let's cut this one open and see what we got inside. As I was touching this pepper with my bare hand, I thought that was a bad idea. So let's now see what we got going on. Nice and crunchy, and I cut into it, just like a jalapeno. It smells like a jalapeno, which is good. Let's see what the inside is like. Wow, not many seeds at all. I think we have two seeds, and I can already tell that this is a dud. It's all black. Oh, there's a nice looking seed in here. It does have a little dark spot as well, but not in the center, so it might be different. Um, I'm gonna clear out all the seeds just so I can save them on this paper plate. When I'm saving seeds, I only use paper plates like this and I just let my seeds air dry. It doesn't have a lot of oil sitting around like some of those super hot peppers. But it's definitely got a thicker wall. We have one potentially viable seed. So not many seeds. I think I'll have to wait for my next one. Let's go taste this thing. So I took off one of the gloves so I can handle the camera well. I'm gonna pop this in my mouth. We already saw we got a thick wall here, not too much oil, not too much placental tissue, um, but it is thick and it smells, it smells like a ghost pepper. Um, it smells like a ghost pepper and a jalapeno, which is cool. Um, and as I'm eating this, I'll go in and discuss a little bit more about what you need to know when you're crossing peppers and in hopes to making a hybrid pepper. So, here we go. I'm a little nervous. This is my first fresh 
could be potential super hot pepper um, of the 2019 season. So this could be bad. Here we go. I get immediate sweetness. <coughs> and then heat. <coughs> it tastes a lot like the ghost. Not too much like the jalapeno. definitely has more heat than the jalapeno. <clears throat> um, a heat level hotter than a habanero. <clears throat> Not as hot as ghost pepper, thank God. Excuse me. It's giving me that chest burn. <coughs> Back of my tongue is pretty hot. It was a pretty small pepper, so it didn't stay my mouth on. But it packs a punch. Okay, so when you're crossing peppers, the first thing you need to know is how to label your pepper appropriately. When you see people promoting their peppers online, and they have it marked like this. Let me get close to the camera. The seed plant will be first, then cross with the pollen plant, and then you have your date, month, and year. And the seed plant in this case was a jalapeno, so jalapeno was first, and then the second one was ghost pepper. And then I had the date <coughs> uh, below when I when I made the cross. The next thing you want to do, especially if you're if you're crossing multiple peppers outside or inside, whatever you want to do. You want to make an identifying mark or number so that if you're keeping records, you can see, um, you know, which pepper is which or how many attempts that you've made. Because when you're doing it outside like I did last year, um, you're susceptible to flower drop, especially if the drop, if the, the temperatures get above 85 degrees Fahrenheit plants will start to drop their flowers. I actually have a video about how to cross peppers and it was actually this pepper so it was a successful cross all the way through um, the F1 generation. And when you first cross a pepper, so when I first took pollen from the ghost pepper seed to the, to the jalapeno flower, that's just, we'll call it F0 even though it's not a real term. I don't think it's a real term. But that, that pollinated jalapeno flower grew out to look like a jalapeno pepper. It doesn't look like the ghost pepper at all. It'll, it'll carry the ghost pepper's traits inside the seeds of that pepper. And those seeds are called your F1 generation. So that's what, that's what this plant is, and that's what the, the pepper I just ate is my F1. And <clears throat> F stands for felile. F1, first felile, first generation, if you want to call it that. The first generation peppers most of the time, all look the same. They carry the dominant traits from both parents. So this one had the texture and the skin of a jalapeno, um, but it had a whole lot more heat, just like I wanted from a ghost pepper. Um, and then the ghost was a red ghost pepper, and the jalapenos ripened to be red too, so the color didn't change for me. The size, they carried, uh, they kind of met in the middle with the size. They're, they're smaller jalapenos, if you want to call them that. But you can have outliers in your F1 population. You can carry more, more traits of one parent um, compared to the other one. Or you could have genes from, recessive genes showing already, but this is really rare. So most of the times it's a 50-50, you get all dominant genes from both parents. Now, <clears throat> F2, and those are the seeds that I just pulled from this pepper, the, the one seed that hopefully is viable, that's where all the fun is. So each seed can carry different genetic material. 
with uh, different proportions, genes, um, or traits from either parent. So I didn't really like the size of these F1 peppers. Hopefully this seed resembles the shape, texture, heat of the pepper I just had, but hopefully it's a little bit longer and hopefully it has a little bit more of the jalapeno taste because it was a really, really sweet taste. Um, followed by just pretty much a super super hot pepper heat um, and that kind of took over the, the taste. So I'm going to plant that one seed and then I'm going to harvest the other seeds from the other peppers and plant those as well and grow them out and uh, I'll pick and choose which ones I want. So when I pick those seeds from the F2 the seeds are called the F3. When your F2 flowers start to come you don't want to cross it with another plant. You want to keep it contained within your, within your same plant so that you're only furthering the genetic makeup of that particular plant. And you can then gauge um, the genetic makeup of the pods a little bit better than if you were. If you were to cross it with, if you were going to pollinate it with another plant, even though, it, even if you got the seeds from the same pepper, um, you could screw it all up and you won't be able to track um, because you'll get ge different genetic uh, material from both plants rather than just the one. So make sure you self-pollinate the plants <coughs> and then once they produce pods, take those seeds out and then save those seeds for the, the F3. I know it's confusing and I'm no geneticist so this is probably vastly simplified and probably not even easy to understand. Basically, your F0 will look like the seed plant. F1 will mostly be a combination of the dominant traits of both parents. F2, each seed can produce a different type of pod. Then you want to self-pollinate your F2 so that all the genetic material stays in and you can see what pods are actually being made from the genetic material of those seeds. And then once those pods are ripened, you can save those seeds and then that's your F3. Repeat that step of self-pollination to strengthen your strand through F4 and then onwards until you make a um, a solid strain of pepper. Another thing to do before you cross your peppers is you got to check the species of your pepper plant. And I have an episode describing all that, so I'm not going to go into detail there. But if you cross, if you cross certain species with another, they're potentially not viable. That's about it, guys. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope to uh, continue this strand of pepper, and I hope to master the jalapeno, getting a very, very hot jalapeno, some nice jalapeno texture, and some nice jalapeno taste. Don't forget to please hit my Farmer George logo when it pops up. Leave me a like and leave me a comment. Let me know which peppers you're interested in crossing and why you want to do it. I hope this video helped you out. Remember, I'm Farmer George. Thanks for watching. Let's share and grow together. See you next time.